It's time for the Rob Ash Show, featuring Drake University football with your host, Mark Meisenheimer. The Rob Ash Show is sponsored by Des Moines Mitsubishi, Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, and Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Thanks for tuning in to the Rob Ash Show. We know why you're here. You're Rob Ash. You're the head coach of the Drake football team. The show's named after you. I'm Mark Meisenheimer. I'm along for the ride. And this week it was UW-Platteville coach. This is a tough team that comes from a very tough league, the WIAC. You're right, Mark. They played a really good game. Uh, Wisconsin-Platteville pulled this one out, uh, you know, and 33-23, and to 10-point win for them. And, and they played a great game. They, they're used to playing tough games in the conference up there. It's a great conference. And they're very well coached. They played a very sound football game. And we helped them out a little bit, too. We talked a little bit about this off-camera. Turnovers can hurt you, but when they have turnovers with big returns, that can really hurt you, and that's what happened in this game. That's exactly right, Mark. The turnovers, we've talked about them all year, how critical they are, and in, in this case, they had a, a lateral that they ran back for a touchdown. They also had an um, uh, interception of a tipped pass that they ran from our 20 back inside the 10-yard line on the other side of the field. So the big returns on top of turning the ball over uh, made their turnovers more dramatic in the game than the four turnovers that our defense got away from them and kind of negated the fact that we had more takeaways than, than they did. So that's just the way the game goes, but those two plays probably were, clearly were the pivotal plays in the game. All right, highlights, lowlights, yeah. Drake against uw Platteville. I'll help you along on this one All right, right when we return here on the Rob Ash Show. Every new Mitsubishi comes with one very important feature you won't find on any other car or truck. A mechanic to take care of it for 10 years or 100,000 miles. He'll even change the oil free for 3 years or 45,000 miles. Get the best backed cars in the world at Des Moines Mitsubishi 90th and Hickman in Clive. Exceeding expectations, experience, acceleration, Des Moines Mitsubishi. Informal elegance. An eclectic but appealing menu. Impeccable service. And West Des Moines only non-smoking lounge. Where else? CK Steakhouse in the West Des Moines Marriott at 1250 74th Street, West Des Moines. The grower is connected to the trucker. The trucker is connected to the florist. The florist is connected to the ride van. And soon, two families will connect for better or worse. When staying connected matters, count on your hometown wireless communication experts at Electronic Engineering. Electronic Engineering, connections you can count on. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Now, Coach, the week before, you're at night against William Penn, so completely different atmosphere. Now it's like you're kind of back into the routine of things Saturday afternoon at Drake Stadium. Were you, were you guys uh, ready for that change? Well, I think so, Mark. I felt really good about our team. Uh, you know, the day game was our first day game of the year, and, and uh, Platteville, you know, is a Division Three team. Sometimes I worry about our team getting ready to play a so-called Division Three team, even though we know they're an excellent football team. And uh, but, you know, when I look back on the game and we lost the game and I try to analyze it, I don't think it was anything about not being prepared. Our, our guys, had, Platteville got our attention because last year they beat us. Uh, our guys were focused before the game. I, I felt like our intensity was well, good. I think our, our preparation for playing in the daytime was good. We didn't have any problems with the heat. So uh, I think it may just be a situation where, you know, Platteville just came out and, and uh, got the breaks in the game and, and took it away from us. But I, I think our preparation was good and our guys were ready to play. And you look at the highlights and how things start out, 
You guys showed they were ready right off the bat. Let's That's go right. to those highlights of the first half. We uh, we won the toss and uh, and took the football here right away. And uh, the guys were ready to go. You can see it was a beautiful day to play. A little warm, but as I said, our guys didn't have any trouble. We started right away with the ball. We were going to try to run the football. Here's Matt Goodwin early in the game with a strong run on a power play. We ended up getting ourselves in third and nine in this first drive. Connor did a good job stepping up, and he found Shea Maroney on a crossing route. Travis Hardgraves with a good block out front. Gave us the first down, then the rollout. We've got to do this more with Connor. He found James Mickley with a very nice pass there to get another first down. Now we cross midfield. Here's uh, Scott Fadevong with a nice job breaking tackles, running hard, getting extra yards. And then on about the sixth or seventh play of the drive, we run a zone play here to the right. And Scotty cuts it back, which is the way the zone play is designed. And then with his great speed, he's able to outrun all of their secondary guys into the end zone. So we take the ball. Drive six, seven, eight plays right down the field, touchdown. So uh, to answer the question about being ready to play, I think we clearly were. Unfortunately, so was Platteville. They did an awesome job on their first drive. When I look back at the play-by-play, -play, I was amazed. They had four third and long situations on this drive, and they converted them all. There's the second one of those four. I put them all on the tape here, not to show our defense doing poorly. Our defense actually played well on first and second down. Look at that well, that's catch. That's a great catch. Great I mean. catch. We had good coverage, and you know, the guy makes a diving catch. And then we get pass interference on this one here. They get the ball on the one, and they take it in. So, you know, uh, each offense comes out of the blocks firing. I'm very, I was very impressed with their third and long execution on that first drive. But our defense was playing fine. I mean, you get a team in third and long by playing good defense and uh, they converted. Now we came back and this is a, I put this on just to show one example of how we did not execute very well early in the game on offense. Platteville comes right back here. They had kind of a hot check at the line. We adjusted to that and got it stopped later in the game. Watch this catch their guy makes. And Jace is draped all over this guy and he makes the catch for the touchdown. So they stopped us because we didn't execute very well and they came back. And defense is a little bit stunned right now because they're not playing badly, but Platteville has two touchdowns in a row. Our offense comes back here with another crossing route underneath to Shea Maroney. That was a good concept for us, worked real well, especially in the first half. Going into the second quarter here, nice third down call, a nice execution here. Matt Goodwin gets the ball out on the flat. Unfortunately, we couldn't convert from that point. We tried a, uh, a long field goal here, a 46-yard, 45-yard field goal, and Tyler McGlade drills it. He's having a good season so far, doing extremely well for us, and he gets us uh, points on the board there to go to 14 to 10. Uh, Platteville's trying to run the ball more out of their spread offense, and they came into the game saying they were going to try to do that, but our guys stopped the run effectively all day. We had really good coverage again. Jace Dennison did a pretty good job all day on their receiver, and then they tried to go for it on short yardage here. Look at our guys swarm to the ball. Uh, Brant Perriott, 79, all the guys, Martindale. Then Nick Ross breaks on their little jailbreak screen. That play killed us last year, and this year they had no chance. So we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, this is Mike Bialis. I wanted to show a couple of his runs in the game. Uh, he's probably our number two tailback right now, and he, he's quick, runs hard. He's got to get his pads down a little bit, and he'll be fine. Unfortunately, we had to punt again. We just we couldn't sustain our drives, Mark, in the first half on offense. Jace Dennison did a great job there on punt coverage. Special teams playing well. Defense continuing to put great pressure on the quarterback, breaking on the ball, you know, really raising our level on defense now to get them stopped after their first two touchdown drives. Another one where we had guys closing on the ball in a hurry. So we're starting to, you know, feel like we're hitting our stride on defense, and then we ran the ball extremely well. Scotty Fadevong with an excellent run, and then here's the key play in the first half, tipped ball. It's a lateral. J.J. picks it up, and he thinks the play is over, and uh, referees did not blow it dead. And I'm not sure why they didn't. Uh, you know, his progress was clearly stopped. They had pushed him back four or five yards. The ball went down on the ground, and, and it was a touchdown for Platteville. Very discouraging way to end the half because we had hit our stride defensively. We were back in the game. 14-10 would have been fine, but 20-10 after we blocked the extra point. That was a discouraging first halftime score. So when you go into the locker room, are the guys just, are they gutted or, or, or are, you, are you having to rally the troops at this point? Well, I think, you know, it was one of those situations where I think the, the defense was a little frustrated because they had done a nice job stopping. 
uh, Platteville and, and then the touchdown was scored you know, when they weren't even on the field. That's always discouraging for a defense. But their team players and our team rallied nicely, I felt, at halftime and got together and realized we had to play together and stick together as a group in order to get back in this game. And uh, as you'll see, we came out in the third quarter and initially we played just fine. So the halftime was not a major problem. All right, we're going to see those highlights of how you guys get back into the game. But first, here's some friends of Drake football. Putnam Gourmet Steaks is pleased to offer you a healthier alternative in steak. These steaks are hand cut from 100% USDA choice all natural beef. The cattle are corn fed 320 to 365 days with no growth hormones, subtherapeutic antibiotics, or steroids. Putnam Gourmet Steaks are the perfect healthy gift. Rob Ash and the Drake University football staff have enjoyed these steaks and the coaches agree they're incredibly tender and flavorful. Be sure to visit our website at www.putnamsteaks.com. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. So, Coach, you're down by 10 coming out of halftime. You're looking for a spark, and you get it from your defense. Actually, that's a great thing that happened, Mark. It was a, uh, they had the ball first in the second half, and that's always a problem when you're down by 10. The other team's starting out with the ball. We're hoping to get the defense to at least get them stopped. But we, they did it one better than that. Not only did they stop them, they took the ball away from them and gave us a really great start to the second half. All right, let's take a look at those second, highlight, second half highlights. Drake against uw Platteville. Here we go, right at the beginning, they run the uh, screen pass out there and defense starts out fine with a good play. Now the throw out here to the bottom of the screen, watch Jay Stenison now strip the ball away, right there, he gets the ball away and then this, uh, the pile, the famous pile for the fumble. Watch, uh, Brian Conway's right on top of the receiver there. Everybody dives for the ball and this is a mad scramble. It went on for quite some time. Conway comes out with a football. You never know what goes on in those piles, Mark. I don't think you want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. But Conway got the ball, and then we came out with a nice running play. Scotty Fadevong reading the zone play extremely well. We ran the zone play a couple times, and then on the blitz, we ran our favorite pattern, oh, nice. the flag route to Jason Jones. That what a great so nice. start to the half. We're down 20 to 10. We get the turnover. We get the great attack on offense and the touchdown pass. So we're right back in the football game. Uh, Platteville is a little bit shocked and, and our defense continues to play well. Watch this play here. Jimmy Adams breaks on the pass, knocks it down, and we forced Platteville to punt. We got good pressure on their punt unit all through the second half. Almost had the block. Watch JJ. Really good return here. He makes three or four different guys miss. Gets the ball clear up over midfield. I mean, we've got all the momentum in the world right now. Connor drops back to pass. Find Scotty Fadevon. Great catch. Scotty held on. And then this play right here changed the course of the game. It's our flanker screen. They blitzed. I thought they were going to score a touchdown, but watch Tyler Putnam come out of nowhere. What's and the other guy doing? What's the other <laughs> receiver doing? Not blocking. He was escorting him, I guess, <laughs> and then it you know, backfired on him. Our defense held him here on a couple of plays. Uh, batted the ball down right here. Pat Forlidi. Look at his pressure here. Batting the ball down. And then on third down and goal from the nine yard line, they ran a little trail route here through the fade and got the ball in there for the touchdown. So uh, that turnaround there was absolutely monstrous. I mean, we were gonna at least tie the game with a field goal or get ahead, and now they've got a 10 point lead. So our team had to try to rally back. There's a third down pass and catch from Connor to JJ. Here's another nice throw and, and catch to, uh, from Connor to Mickley. So we got another push here into the into Platteville territory. Then we went for it on fourth down, the ball was not at knocked down. And that's got to be something we fix here. Too many balls being knocked down at the line of scrimmage. 
Platteville comes back and our defense now just raises their level throughout the second half. Brian Conway with the interception on the tipped ball. Here's a replay. Great effort there by Martindale to get in. Conway gets the tip. Breeze knocks the receiver down. And uh, we get a, a big turnover. Offense gets another chance to move down the field. Connor here trying to throw the ball on, on uh, third down. Got sacked and so we were unable to get out of there. We didn't have a very good punt. Platteville threatening again. No place to go, quarterback in trouble here. Our defense with a good coverage sack. Nice tackle there by Chris Daniels and uh, uh, Nick Ross coming up. They've continued to, to go down here. We had a great tackle inside there. I think that was Adam Lackey on that play. And then in the fourth quarter, the one thing we couldn't do was we couldn't stop the fade. Uh, they called Jace Dennison there. I thought that ball might have been uncatchable, but. They still ruled it as a, as a uh, penalty in the end zone, gave them the ball with the one, and so Platteville got another touchdown. Our defense was playing better than the score indicated, obviously, with the turnovers having produced scores, and uh, we continued to play well. The defense never gave up. Corey Kapadich getting in there for Riley Yem has a nice uh, interception there. We didn't do anything with it. And then Eric Papp comes up with an interception, and uh, the defense gave us the ball again, and finally, <coughs> offense got a little bit untracked with the we ran a little quick screen here to Matt Goodwin. He gets a first down, uh, crossing midfield. Now Connor's back again. He finds JJ over the middle for a completion. We've got a first down on that play. A nice run here on the draw play. Scotty Fadevong running strong, getting down into the red zone. And then a nice effort here. Connor has to scramble a little bit. He finds Shea Maroney on the backside. Shea breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle or two gets twisted around, but with great effort, he gets all the way into the end zone. So we got up to within uh, 10 points. You know, we're trying to go for two to get to eight points. We missed it, so we had to go for the onside kick. And look at this, it bounces up. Travis Hardgraves just about came down with that one, and that would have been a tremendous way for us to, you know, to get back in the game. We tried to block a punt, just missed it. Uh, Clay Cleveland actually does a pretty nice job fielding this ball and getting some yardage for us up to about the 20. We replayed it. And they're pretty good operation time, but we're just a few inches away from making a block. We had another one later in the, in the game that we almost blocked. It was just a game of near misses. We still kept battling, hit uh, Tyler Putnam up there at midfield, but then we ended the game, and I guess it was kind of fitting, we ended the game with a fumble. And so the turnovers in the long run, it's been our theme, even going back to preseason, we preached about turnovers, and they killed us in this game, unfortunately. Even though our defense did a good job of taking the ball away, we gave the ball to Platteville too many times. And as you pointed out, this game really underlines the point that football is often a game of inches. There are a couple of plays just a little bit, and who knows, it's 33-23 right. Drake winning <clears throat> that game. Well, it could have been that, or, you know, I, I look back at if you take the two big plays away, the, the interception and the lateral that they ran all the way down, our defense really only allowed the, about 20 points in the game. And we, you know, Shea Maroney's touchdown at the end gave us 23. Shea's touchdown should have been the winning touchdown. That should have been the one that, that gave us a 23 to 20 win. But uh, unfortunately, we can't take those two plays away. And as we look at the statistics for the game this weekend, of course, turnovers. That's a, that, <laughs> that is a huge, your defense creating four turnovers. Right. What a big number there. You know, it, it, it's, isn't it strange though? You look at these, at these statistics and you don't see a 10 point loss for Drake. We have more first downs. You know, we had pretty good passing yards. We had way more rushing yards. We had more total offense. Our percentage of passing wasn't the best, but you know, it was okay. The penalties were about even. Turnovers look about even. You know, see, what doesn't show up there is the yards they made when they took the ball away from us. Possession time's about even. I mean, the game was, was a, a, a one-point game like last year's game. It should have been a tie or one-point game based on the statistics, but those big plays just made all the difference. All righty, so we are not done here on the Rob Ash Show. Player interview, play of the week, we're looking ahead. That's still to come, so stay with us. There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor feel, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax, there are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. 
Is your hard-earned money going down the drain every month when you pay rent? The Oaks Development Company has beautiful townhomes available for about the same amount you're paying in rent. They can offer no closing costs or origination fees. All major appliances are included. And at Frisbee Park in the Meadowland in Des Moines, you'll benefit from the tax abatement program for five years. So stop throwing your hard-earned money away and contact the Oaks Development Company today. Charlie Ice Pizza, the real thing. There's a big difference between the big chains and my independent pizzerias. And you can taste the difference right here at Polly Eyes Pizza. We've been serving our family recipe to Iowa family since 1957. Authentic crisp crust, custom blended mozzarella cheese, preservative free sausage, and fresh vegetables. So come try my pizza, Polly Eyes Pizza. Polly Eyes Pizza, the real thing. Every new Mitsubishi comes with one very important feature you won't find on any other car or truck. A mechanic to take care of it for 10 years or 100,000 miles. He'll even change the oil free for 3 years or 45,000 miles. Get the best backed cars in the world at Des Moines Mitsubishi 90th and Hickman in Clyde. Exceeding expectations, experience, acceleration, Des Moines Mitsubishi. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Now it is time for the Des Moines Mitsubishi Play of the Week, and for that, we're going to go to Coach Rob Ash. This week's Play of the Week was a touchdown run by Scott Fadevong on the very first offensive possession of the game. This is a zone play. It can be designed to go any direction. What's going to happen? They're going to, the play is going to be designed to start this direction, but watch the blocks at the back here. On the back side of the play, as uh, Scott starts to his right, all the good blocking coming here on the back side caves down the defense and, and Scott's able to cut way back behind those blocks and then break it back to the outside and get all the way in for the touchdown. The cornerback back here, number 21 for Platteville, pursued too far across the field and left open the cutback lane for Scotty to get in. But of course, it was the blocking up front with the guys on the line that made the play possible. Big game for Scott Vadevong. He had over 150 yards rushing. Also a big game for the Drake Bulldogs defense. They created four turnovers. So we're going to go to one of those guys for our player interview. It's Jace Dennison. He's a defensive back. Big thing we need to work on is definitely would be uh, third downs. We struggled in the first half with being able to get out of third downs. Um, for turnovers, I mean, we, we, did, we got our goals. We were able to force turnovers and make things happen. Um, from the standpoint of secondary, we just need to tighten up some things, make some adjustments on some routes, and just be able to, that'll just take practice and just be able to correct our mistakes when we go on Monday and look at film, see what we did wrong. Moorhead, stay, that'll be a big game for us. It'll be your first game against uh, playing against a conference team. Uh, they are from the south, so it really won't count against us from the standpoint of wins and losses in that category. But it, it's a good chance to just be able to play a team from uh, from the south conference. We'll be able to see, hopefully, be able to play against them or maybe another team from uh, in the PFL come November. Jace Dennison, I, I coach. I know since I've been doing this show, you said his name a number of times. He's one of your your stalwart guys back back there in the defensive backfield. He really is, Mark. Jace is a junior. He's from uh, Thornburg, Iowa, and he's been a starter since midway through his true freshman year at defensive back all last year at corner. And uh, he also covers those punts every time. He was our special teams player of the year last year just for his punt coverage, and he also blocks kicks, PATs, and, and uh, field goals. So he's a very versatile, very important member of our team, especially on defense. And nice that he's a junior. You That's right. Got him for got one, him more, one year. more year, for sure. All right, we are not done here on the Rob Ash Show. We're going to be looking ahead and looking at the standings, things like that. So stay with us.
Tired of playing those old boring games like Parcheesi, Tiddlywinks, and Checkers? Then play a new game called Dominoes. Dominoes isn't new. Dominoes from the Iowa Lottery is each scratch ticket gives you multiple chances to win, including a top prize of $30,000. It's the most fun you can have with Dominoes. Play Dominoes from the Iowa Lottery and remember to try gold cards. Oh, we will. <laughs> There's only one place to stay in Des Moines, the fully renovated Quality Inn and Suites Event Center with rooms that have a beautiful view, an indoor pool with an outdoor field, and an elegant ballroom for all occasions. The Governor's Lodge is a great place to relax. There are conference rooms to accommodate your business meetings, then unwind in a room with a whirlpool. Plan your next event at the Quality Inn and Suites Event Center, downtown Des Moines. At Regency Homes, it's about building smarter. It's about building healthier, environmentally friendly homes. It's about building homes that are safe, secure, and energy efficient. It's about smarter financing. Regency. Building smarter. When you add it up, it's about getting a lot more home for your money. It's about building the new American dream. Regency Homes. Contact your real estate professional. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Coach, we're winding down here. Let's take a look at the standings in the PFL. Well, you know, it hasn't been a great year for the PFL yet overall. Uh, it was a tough day for the North. Everybody lost. Dayton lost to Yale. Of course, we lost. San Diego lost to Penn. Valparaiso and Butler both, uh, both lost their games as well. Valparaiso lost to St. Francis, Pennsylvania, and Butler lost to Moorhead State. That loss to Moorhead State gave the South their first win of the season. Moorhead State beat Butler, so that's the only win that the South has had, although I've said it every time, uh, every week on the show, Jacksonville, Austin P and Davidson have played extremely tough schedules so far against scholarship teams, so those records are very deceptive. All right, and you're going to talk a little bit more about the game this week. Obviously, you've got your, your weekly run around with the radio show and your quarterback club. All right, let's just highlight those again for everybody, Mark. The radio show, of course, is on Tuesday nights live at Autographs at 100th and Douglas. We've had a real good time with that show every week. Uh, this week, again, we're going to be preempted by the Cubs. I think they're going to rebroadcast the show on Thursday uh, at 7 to 8 p.m. But it's, it is live on Tuesday night out there at Autographs. Uh, we also have the quarterback club at uh, Monday at 11.30 till 1 o'clock at Christopher's. I do bring the, the film of the game and the little marker and the laser pointer and show the X's and O's. It's very, I think it's uh, informative, a lot of fun. And then, of course, after every home game, we have our post-game celebration. We're hoping that it'll be more of a celebration than this last week uh, down at Raccoon River Brewing Company, 10th and Mulberry. Those people do a great job for us, so we'll hopefully see some people down there after the game this coming Saturday. All right, you're at home again, a 1 o'clock game, and this is going to be a historic game. Tell us about that. Well, it's Moorhead State coming into Drake Stadium for the first time ever. Uh, they're actually bussing out here from... Uh, Kentucky, that's going to be a long trip for them, and, and uh, they're a good program. You know, we played our first game ever out there last year, beat them, or they beat us in a, in a tough game, and they are the two-time defending champions of the South Division. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to, to uh, play against a very good team and for our fans to see one of the PFL South teams that, that uh, rarely gets a chance to come here. And they won't be back again for uh, four years by the cycle of the way things go in the league. So hopefully we can get a good crowd to see Moorhead State play us. Anything in particular you want to work on this week? We've got to get our timing and execution on offense shored up. Our defense is playing well. I mean, I'm very happy with what they've done. Jamie Marshall and his coaches have done a really good job with the defense. We just have to get our, our, our offensive timing back, particularly in the passing game. All right, Coach. It's winding down. We're all done here for another week. For head coach Rob Ash, I'm Mark Meisenheimer. Thanks for joining us. We hope to have highlights of a Drake win over Moorhead State next week.
Um, today was definitely a big disappointment for us, but I mean, from a standpoint, we learned a lot about our team, learned about what we need to really work on from a standpoint of to make ourselves better. Um, for a defense standpoint, I mean, we gave up 33 points, but um, I mean, we got to look at the positives too, but to make ourselves better, we also need to look at the negatives of what we did wrong for t uh, tonight, for today's game. A uh, big thing we need to work on is definitely would be uh, third downs. We struggled in the first half with being able to get out of third downs. Um, for turnovers, I mean, we we, did our, we got our goals. We were able to force turnovers and make things happen. Um, from the standpoint of secondary, we just need to tighten up some things, make some adjustments on some routes, and just be able to, that'll just take practice and just be able to correct our mistakes when we go on Monday and look at film, see what we did wrong. Uh, Moorhead State, that'll be a big game for us. It'll be your first game against uh, playing against a conference team. Uh, they are from the south, so it really won't count against us from the standpoint of wins and losses in that category. But it, it's a good chance to just be able to play a team from uh, from the south conference, and we'll be able to see, hopefully, be able to play against them or maybe another team from uh, in the PFL come November. No.